And I'm going to move us on to uh, the custom streaming. And it should say we're live. Do you no, I don't see anything that says that we're live. Nope. Boo. Okay. I must have to do it on the rescreen. Do you see it? It says we're live. I don't see it. Okay. I need to check one of the channels we're supposed to screen, stream to. Uh, and I'm checking Facebook to see if we're on. Cool. <laughs> like everything seems so slow today. Girl, everything <laughs> it's just the craziest thing. We keep trying, I keep trying to like turn the world back into like the fast everything that it used to be, and it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to the world all of a sudden? All right, I won't have lights in my eyes if I don't quit messing with that light. I see uh, okay. restream on Facebook, but it's it's just a black screen. And it uh, oh, there's a blue circle yeah, says that it's like loading. <laughs> Say what? I see uh, the screen is uh, black with a, a blue circle saying loading. <laughs> okay, okay, it's coming. <laughs> uh, my overlay is working, but I can't get us on there and I don't know how to do that up oh, camera maybe that'll help I can't get no light today now <laughs> I don't know what's happened to me and my lights I'm sorry I'm trying it's just not working <laughs> it's all right I see you clear oh good now this says it's unable to access my camera oh so I guess we're just gonna go live in Facebook and see if that helps. <laughs> I really wanted to use Restream today and I don't know how. It was working last night. Now I'm sad. <laughs> oh, don't be sad. <laughs> For a reason. We'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I, I guess I have to create an event in Facebook and okay. have that. You know, I think you have you think you have stuff set up uh, <laughs> the night before, and it doesn't work. You know, we do this all day, every day, every <laughs> day. and that's how come we stop using Zoom. Oh, because they are always changing something because they're trying to improve their platform, and it's their thing, and they're more concerned about kind of like the general population as opposed to you specifically so you can have stuff set up the day before and then all of a sudden oh we're not going to allow this api to work anymore yeah that makes me freaking crazy <laughs> Boy, my eyebrows looking all nappy <laughs> <laughs> when you get old weird stuff happens i'm head that I cannot wait to start talking and do my skin talks with L. That is going to be just ridiculous because we're going to talk about everything. All these little girls going to be like, what? Because <laughs> when it happened to me, nobody told me. I had to call my aunt. I was like, this is, what is this? And she was like, honey, that's, that, that's normal. I'm like, no, it's not normal. It wasn't like this yesterday. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> she's like uh yeah that's that's how it happened <laughs> I was like no ma'am I was like I am not ready to accept this as part of my fate she was like well what you gonna do about it? <laughs> oh she's like well oh and then she was like it's not a wrinkle you can't fix that I was like <laughs> wow, mama I call, oh, my aunt is funny. My aunt, I call her mama because we used to call my mom, mommy. And spending my life around twins, they always have rhyming names. So I thought, <laughs> I, I didn't know that it was a twin thing that you have a rhyming name. I thought it was just, you know, life. People just them? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just life. People have rhyming names, but no. <laughs> so it just stuck. 
And her kids used to call her mama all the time. I was like, well, maybe that's her name. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I was a, a very literal child. <laughs> and I still have to make sure that I'm not being literal most of the time. Life hacks. <laughs> it's saying I have invalid times, but the start time is 10 a.m. and the end time is 11 a.m. Ah, You can't start it before. You got to start it like, say, like 10, 12. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's after 10. Yeah. Oh, makes sense. Okay. I'll say the next time was uh, 10, 15. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Woo. I got to remember not to move around a lot make people the green screen is not a fun thing see uh now i have to see if it will uh even go live on uh facebook mm. check the more settings what's your favorite uh platform to uh, use it depends on the event, right? So we use a lot of different ones. And so what we decided that our niche actually is, is medium to large events. So we um, use, oh my God, lots of them. <laughs> it just depends on the client, right? Because um, um, so like if you're going to do something with somebody who like is a teacher or something like that, I like um, crowd, what's that? Crowdcast, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. And then like, but our like specialty one that we use is air meat. We love air meat. Love air meat. Yeah. It's amazing. We love air meat. So, and then we actually like, like wrote a bunch of custom code to use in there for, um, so we can get, I mean, you know, we got a big team. So we really like try to make it like a like an immersive virtual experience as opposed to just because people are like I'm tired of virtual and I don't want to go to Zoom meeting I'm like honey this is not a Zoom meeting I promise <laughs> there's nothing Zoom like about this event because what we've been able because I really like the fact that you can do all the things every single thing that you can do in an in person event you can do in this one. Um, in, in air meet so it's kind of I guess that's kind of fast becoming my favorite okay haven't used it yet but I've been to a lot of um air meet events and I really like the lounge mm -hmm. yes the lounge is the business but we so what we also do too is the um we we fi I figured out how to get you know how they have the list of people who are attending mm-hmm so, so we use that um, as a way to, like a different way to network. And like, so we go, we do a, like a lot of um, experience training mm -hmm. during the event. So people can take advantage and do different things instead of just sitting there. Because a lot of times people, oh, and we also have to make sure that we tell people that they have to uh, get dressed. <laughs> because people will come to because they think it's gonna be a zoom and they could just sit there and have their black screen or like yeah no you don't really want to do that for this event you want to have some clothes on because you can actually get to sit at a table and talk to people that's pretty great <laughs> well we are live now finally <laughs> hey you guys Hooray. <laughs> so L Kersey, we are live on Facebook Facebook Meet L. Kersey. L, please tell the good people about yourself. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I am, let's see, I have been an undercover nerd all my life. Like, so what you see, like, is totally, I, I guess, not necessarily what you get when it comes to me. I'm always like, um, like, I love all tech. You know, I like, like, um, <laughs> like let's see um like sci-fi um you know star wars star trek all that kind of stuff so yeah i'm a nerd <laughs> i like it go ahead oh i just said i like it 
Okay. I, I was gonna say I'm I'm more of a Star Trek fan than the Star Wars, but same difference sometimes. It's all about the makeup, <laughs> honey. I know yeah. you know it's funny because when you think about like most people are like, oh, I like this, or I like that. I love it because of the costumes. I love the makeup. I love how they just turn people into any old and every old thing. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, um, big fan of makeup artists and um, puppeteers. A lot of the uh, Jen Hansen stuff I did not know was puppets. I, I actually thought they were makeup artists. Uh -huh. but, yeah, get the job done. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love all that stuff. I love, oh, oh, my new thing is Terry Fader. Dude, I so love him. Oh, my God. And then there's another girl. She does it, too. They're um, ventriloquists. And they can really sing. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's awesome. I try to sing, but you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> so um, how did you, uh, did your love of sci-fi get you into uh, Love and Tech? Yes, yes. Um, because all the people who love like sci-fi stuff, like, okay, so like my friends used to play Dungeons and Dragons and, um, and, and then, those group of people are like the first people who like started doing like all the different coding and um learning all those computer languages and all that so you know we were nerds in the 80s <laughs> do you have a favorite language oh my gosh no uh, everything for me is about like trying to solve the problem so whatever tool is necessary to make the problem resolve is what I'm gonna go for I'll learn it I have to that's very adaptive of you like if it's not html and it's not going to work for me I'm like, ah, <laughs> give me some no code <laughs> hey if it I you know I have always been that way I'm I'm my if if I had to pick a thing like one thing that I would like identify myself as I would say as an inventor like because I feel like if there's a problem and it needs to be solved figure it out you know and then that always you always have to create something that doesn't exist and I that's literally what I'm always every business every um I have like a bunch of patents and all kinds of stuff that of stuff that I just created because it needed to be there <laughs> so kind of happened to me I understand I love that you make things work <laughs> yeah you gotta I feel like that's what life is about you know you have to people need solutions so why not try to help them so what did you see in a uh, virtual events that uh you thought people needed as a solution Oh, okay. So originally we were doing virtual events for um, uh, like, like TEDx. We did some for different, like, like TEDx, hey, shout out to TEDx HG. They just did their um, annual event. It was really amazing. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And uh, let me see what else. We did just a lot of different things and it became um, a solution to a problem for people who wanted to be able to reach more people than they could in one in locally. So that was like pre COVID. And so then we had like a bunch of like teachers and, um, uh, churches, believe it or not, because, you know, we, well, also I have um, EK Media Broadcast Network. So our channels became a place where people needed to, wanted to be able to have these like broadcasts and everything. So it just became, it kind of grew and grew and grew. And then when COVID came, oh, honey, we couldn't create any content because people couldn't get together because the insurance wouldn't even cover it. It was crazy. I was freaking out. I have any idea what we're going to do. And then I kept getting calls from different organizations, like shout out to National Beat Battle Association, um, <laughs> specialists. Okay. So anyway, so that was really great. So we did a, 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 a like a pre-launch with them to 
get get that up and running and now that's going it's really great they're doing a really good job with that and um but different organizations needed to be able to still talk to their either their employees we did a lot of um we started out with just businesses doing like in trainings you know so like if you're at home you can't go to work you can't do the training you can't get to whatever they have for you. So we start doing those virtual and then we start hosting them on channels like private channels. And so the net became a solution, right? So that was really the thing. So um, so it was a pivot that kind of became bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's how come like that one division is now virtual integrated productions. And we use like movie producers and like high code tech people and different types of coaches to help people be able to do it because it was like nobody knew how to do it they just didn't know how and it was just like okay so now we've like expanded the whole idea of virtual because i don't think that virtual is ever going to go away because people realized how lucrative and how many more people they can actually help in a shorter period of time. It is mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I had, um, when I post your um, picture of you, I had a quote from your LinkedIn page. What I found was that it was better because of the analytics. I realized that the back end of streaming TV was the game changer that nothing other than internet marketing held accountable to. And I was like, oh. yeah, you can uh, measure this. I like that you can measure your work. And that makes all the difference. It's like, if it can't be measured, it can't be counted. Did it really happen? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because you, there's so, like, um, your everything from attendance to attendee interaction to how long people actually interacted and then the whole of course the money thing like okay so have you sold tickets how much money did you make from that and then we then we have like the whole layer where we've been able to figure out how to make it viable for sponsors to actually sponsor these events just like you would in a an in-person event so that was like the hardest part and everybody's been complaining because nobody had been able to figure out how that's actually how I think we kind of like bumped up our <laughs> events because we were able, we have a whole program for sponsors we have a program for attendees we have a program for hosts so it actually takes what you know about in person and turns it into a reality of virtual. So now you have everybody's playing on the same on an equal playing field. And it's it's it is if if connection and engagement and is what you want in for your event, virtual is way, way great. Yes, that <laughs> like, is exactly what you want. <laughs> It is. It is it's, it was one of the it is one of the most amazing things because it's because you know networking for me in person is difficult because I always want to talk to certain people and then certain other people want to talk to me and then you know everybody wants to talk to the person I want to talk to so we never get a chance to talk it so it makes me nuts so I'm like okay. <laughs> Make, so I'm just like, okay, so in virtual, you really have the opportunity to schedule a time to talk, you can chat, you can, um, depending on which platform you are, you can go into a private room and like private network, which you just like one on one. It's, and, and it's, and it's really, and it's so comfortable because it's not forced and you don't have other people kind of like around and um, you can be you can you can make some deals right right there at the time you don't have to wait right yes. this to me that's like i'm like oh my god I thought the first time it happened to me i thought i was going to lose it because i was like is this real are they serious <laughs> and yeah they filled out all the paperwork and everything i was like wow so to me it just gives you um it's like the whole 
I think that's why Clubhouse worked, right? Because as a platform, because you were able to cut to the chase. There's no, oh, let's schedule something, let's this. It's like, we're talking right now, let's get it done. And, yeah. and it was, yeah, so that's what I think is great about it. Yeah. What's your uh, favorite uh, platform for uh, having your guests uh, network with each other? Okay, so that, it depends. Okay, so I'm always like, okay, so it's always solutions-based. But if I had to just pick a thing, it's going to be AirMe because AirMe is like a number one because there's so many different ways to network with people. But um, if you have like a more introverted crowd, Crowdcast is good because it's more like kind of like education-based and people can be less conservative um, and it doesn't take as much effort um, I think Zoom is fine, but people seem to be getting Zoom fatigue. So the the difference between like a virtual event and Zoom is like totally different. And it's so hard. I think that is the hardest thing to get people to, to, to get these days. Like it's not a Zoom meeting. <laughs> it's really not. It's so different. I don't mind Zoom. I have been to some really fun Zoom events, but the thing I love about Air Meet is the lounge. I can get up and walk out. I've yes. never been to an Air Meet event. I'm always in the lounge. And I've booked uh, this show up until uh, August because I've hung out in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. But, and that's that's the thing. It's like you you can, you have an opportunity to connect for real. It, it's not like, because I've been in Zoom events and everybody, you, it's harder because you can't, to me, it's hard to type and pay attention to what's happening. And so, so I miss a lot of the stuff in the chat or I'm trying to figure out what's happening in the chat or a bunch of people jumping on the say, and I'm like, okay, I'm old people. Okay. I'm old. I do not have the capability of reading these little chats like this. And so um, one of the things, one of the projects I'm working on is with my daughter. She wants, she's a, she's a gamer. So I'm like, why don't you just create one of these little things? So, you know, like everybody else has like a gaming channel or whatever. And she has one, but she doesn't do it. I'm like, come on, let's play on this thing. I want to know too. So um, the whole crazy thing about that is that it, it just, the only thing, the only way you have to connect with these people is through the chat. So you have to have somebody monitoring the chat, but the person monitoring the chat might not know like what you can see when you're talking to somebody. So it's just complicated. So, but if on air meet, you get to get on the video and if it's somebody you want to talk to, you can just talk to them and yeah. there's no chat necessary. Well, there's like four different chat boxes in air meet. I have yeah. gotten lost in the chat. So I kind of leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but that's why, I mean, it's like, but if you are a chat person, it's perfect because you, there's, there's, there's the individual chat that you can have with somebody. There's the chat that you can have with, um, like the entire, entire event, like anybody who's logged in, then you have one that's just specifically for the topic at hand. And you have the other chat that is at the lounge tables. Yeah, it's kind of, I was about to say, it's kind of difficult to explain this part because you have a table, right, in <laughs> Airme. So if, 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 if you're at the table, and I know you guys don't, I can't even explain, is this, so you don't have to go to an event. You have yeah. to go to an event and just see, because it's not like anything that is really explainable. It's like you sit at a virtual table, but all the participants at the virtual table show up in video so you actually it looks like me and you are talking right now it's like one-on-one and it makes it it's great you can it, you can you can even sit there and if you had like something that you needed to explain you could like share your screen just like you can like so so let's refer that back to zoom the same thing so the same tools and skills that you learn in zoom you can take that with you to an air meet event and use that so that you can interact even at a deeper level I guess that's why I like Airme. yeah yeah I want the ability to upsell the lounge or make the lounge a VIP area maybe I'm thinking um use um 
say let's say the event is free and and paid if you want it free you can watch it live youtube but if you want to uh, come in and pay you can hang out at the lounge making a lounge vip or something like that yes that's, that's I how i envision it <laughs> that would definitely work so what we do is for that is we have like um you know how in you have your vendor spaces yeah so we've been able to make it so that like you can come into a specific it's not it's so it's not a vendor space at that point it's like vip and and vip you can only have like six tables so it's like super exclusive and then you can have it where your say your speaker mm -hmm. can have people from their team sit at the tables and help out answer questions and make appointments and all kind of stuff like that and then you can also have people sit at the table with the speaker, you know, back. So, you know, that's pretty cool. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do, but you know what you could do too. So speaking of like, I'm always thinking like you can, um, we, I like to use Zoom in, in addition for stuff. Like we use, you know, different things, especially like tech issues. You know, we always used to have a, like a Zoom per a person, a tech person sitting on Zoom. So mm -hmm. if somebody has like a tech issue, but um, you can um, use Zoom spaces for your VIP, right? And then have that. And then, because they just started letting you be able to transmit into Zoom, into AirMeet. Did you see that? Oh, so, I did. Yes, custom I like that. <laughs> yes, custom RTMP. So now you can, um, you can, you know, you could always stream it out, but now you can stream another location in. Which, that is amazing. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So um, we're so because we have this event coming up. Um, Okay, so this event really started. This is so crazy. I don't even know if it's time to talk about this, but because we had this event coming up, I really have been um, trying to figure out like how can I like stretch what we've done before and kind of like make it different. And I was like, because this is, I mean, it's an internal event that we're doing because I'm like, you know, I told you about it. Like, just tell everybody else about it. Huh? You can tell everybody else about it. It's your event. Well, I'm just saying, and well, okay. So, so it's it's called more ways than one to be more than one way to be a mom, right? And so, but what I wanted to do is like stretch the whole ability of people to be able to talk about their mom, right? So some people, like I have, like some people, like the speakers are from all around the world, and they're all going to talk about all different things about um, mom. Ism, right so there's um so i was having a conversation in a facebook group with several ladies because we all love the same purse brand <laughs> okay so, so sorry so we were talking and all of it and i was like y'all you know it'd be so fun if we had if we could do a mother's day event because we were talking about like which purse we wanted to get for mother's day and so we were like talking about it, talking about it. I was like, well, I could put it together and you, if you guys want, I will. So then I did. And so now, so then an, uh, I was talking about another group. I was like, well, if I'm going to do this for them, I might as well invite y'all too. And they're like, yeah, we want to come. I was like, okay, cool. So then one lady was like, I'm not a mom. And I don't, um, I, I don't, I don't know if I could come. I was like, of course you could come. You have a mom, right? And she was like, yeah. I was like, well, you can celebrate your mom. She said, but she's gone. I'm like, yeah, mine is gone too. So that's how come the whole Mother's Day thing it has never been like a great experience. Like I never loved Mother's Day, even as a mom or a grandma, none of that. It just, it's just always sad for me because Oh, like my grandma passed, you know, just, just to all the ladies in your life that you would really honor on Mother's Day. And I was just like, I, yeah. So I was like, you know what? There has to be other people who are like us. So I changed the whole event <laughs> to a whole nother life, right? So it just became, okay. So we have somebody who's going to talk about being an adoptive mom, um, being a, a mom of the world, 
um, because she uh, helps orphans. Um, we have somebody who's going to talk about, uh, I don't want to give it all away, right? <laughs> but <laughs> they're going to talk about I'll tell you all about it. So they're going to talk about um, like diversity in motherhood and, and diversity in the sense that it's not just like whether like your race or whatever. It's, it's, it's about a whole bunch of other things. And um, let's see, they're going to talk about like being a stepmom, like, like the difficulties that you can have becoming a mom, like um, just how you have to be limitless and, and willing to go to the nth degree to help your children be successful. Um, we're going to talk about like being a, 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 a financially smart mom. Um, which I think is so important because college is so expensive. Even if you're, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Like, and how you have to be a coach for your mom. Oh, and then like, so one of the, the last segment is all about beyond motherhood, right? So this is going to be delicious. Like, I was like, oh my God. So we're going to talk about like, how you're going to be a sexy mom. Cause you, the way that you got to be a mom was not, not being sexy. Right. <laughs> and um beyond motherhood like how you have to even though you're a mom you can't just stop being a mom I mean, you know stop being a person so um there's a lot of like um there's a lot of things weaved into this the talking we're gonna there's a comedian and there's a, a vocalist and um there's oh we're gonna talk about okay so one of the questions that I always get is what's the best way to wash your face can you believe that <laughs> it really is it's like one of the things that people really really want to know and and it's not and it's because if you think about it you never really get taught that and then there's all these things that you add on and this and this and that so um I I'm toying with the idea I haven't decided yet if because that's one of I don't know that's one are of they the asking you that because uh your background in esthetician or because they saw you watch your daughter's face oh well because <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, um, uh, uh, you know, I used to have a skincare clinic called Everyday Glamour Girl. And then um, we kind of transitioned that into a lot of a, a lot of other things. And we'll talk about that another time. But Skin Talks with Elle is, is a whole nother project that I'm launching next month. And um, it's all about how to to answer all those questions that I always get asked, you know, like, like, why is my, why am I like in my sixties and I'm still have acne? Why, you know, am I, is, um, uh, I don't know, just a whole bunch of things. Just so people send me questions and I answer them. So it's kind of like dear Abby in a way. <laughs> and then we take you down a whole nother road of like, everything for me is why is this like this? And there's never one answer because bodies are so different and you have to, you have to kind of go more for what is the cause for you and how we're going to still provide, find that solution. And that kind of like ties back into me and my solution-based brain, right? So, um, you're a solution yeah. finder. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we really focus on how to help you navigate. Like I wrote a book. So my book is called, oh, something. What is my book called? The, I should know this like off the top of my head, but it's called the, the Guide to Aging Skin. That's what it's called. So, but this, but it's more about how to figure out how to navigate the beauty industry. And then one of the things we talk about is don't let the hype get you twisted, right? Because you go into the store and you're like, I need a cleanser. You walk out of the store, you're going to spend $400 on stuff that you don't even know what you bought. And every, and I'm like, if you go in the store, you write, so I have like this little download that you get with the book and you literally have to go in the store and you only can buy that one thing, whatever you came <laughs> in for, right? Because it's like, yeah, that package is pretty, but you haven't researched that product yet. And, and that's- the I same love thing. package design. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's designed to get you amped up, but what's inside can get you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a big deal. So, so I know I like everyone's gonna like you. What are y'all talking about? But there, I am. I have a lot of projects that I'm working on, but 
most of them are all, all of them actually are now going to be virtual because of just how great it is. Like, can you imagine like being able to talk to somebody who has like your same problem and, and, um, and, and y'all trying to work it out together instead yeah. of just, yeah, I think that's great. Like, I love community. I think that it takes a village, not only to raise your children, but to be a person. You know, you have to have friends, you have to have people confidants, you have to have mentors, you got to have people who, who have the answer when you don't. Yeah. Like, so. I don't think that um, you were just going on. What I got from what you just said is um, you crowdsource your topics. You get information about your topics. Um, it's like you do polling or surveys when you talk to people who, who come and ask you questions and that's how you fill your content for your events. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think that's smart. You're asking people what they want or they're telling you what they want and you put together a solution field event for them. I like that. That's genius. <laughs> I just like I get goosebumps like every time I like think about things I'm like oh my because there's so we have oh my gosh we have so many projects coming up right and I keep going okay so how how do we I'm always like want to stretch it like I'm like okay so last time we did this right and so all the people really liked it but if we give them like pre like okay so like this time like one of the things that we're doing is we're giving people an opportunity to give a shout out to their mom. And we're going to broadcast it not only for the event, we're going to broadcast it on, it's going to stream. Like, so we got like 15 minutes, you know how you do that 15 minute pre-show. So mm -hmm. we had a pre-show and in the pre-show, that's when we're going to show a lot of the, um, a lot of the mom tributes. So there we call them shout outs. So the shout outs, are going to actually be broadcasted like a lot of places because it's going to be part of like um you know okay so yeah we did this event and then look at this so you never know where your video is going to show up and your mom like your mom is going to be a star right so yeah. that's awesome so especially if for me like for my mom like said she's passed and I know yours is too but like being able to honor your mom in that way like just like because if you think about like the the day of the dead like from Mexico and they talk about how if you don't remember your person who passed then they get uh, almost like they can get more and more erased right that's why they honor them so much so in I don't know that I don't know totally how to explain it I just know a, a little bit about it and I thought that was so poignant because you have if you're remembered then you are are stronger as a being you are regardless of where you are so I thought okay so the fact that we're going to be able to give people an opportunity to let other people real you know like kind of like recognize your mom and 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 be inspired and awed by your mom I think that's great it is so um you got your information from your uh your audience your guests you are allowing your guests to do shout outs to their moms which I think will in, uh, create increase engagement participation uh you'll get other people excited and maybe uh want to enter your event um so how do you get your speakers how did you uh, get your speakers into joining your event? Yeah, you're, okay. So I know a lot of people in a lot of different industries. So I just was like, you know what? I want you to, can you, would you be interested in doing this? And this is what it's all about. And then some people are like, oh my God, I'm like booked. Um, yeah, sure. I'm like, okay. But the cool thing about doing virtual is you can pre-record the content so that it's, you don't have those, those tech issues. Right. Those tech issues make me crazy because we were in the middle of an event. It was a great event. The content for this event was life changing for the people who were attending. One of the guys, his Internet connection was um, satellite. 
if you have ever tried to get a satellite feed on the internet, you know that <laughs> like I, we were in hell. We were literally in tech hell because his feed kept dropping his like and when he was on it was like doot, 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 like and I was like oh my god and I am so glad that I had that backup video okay because it was it was it, it would have because the people who went to the event would have missed platinum but what he talked for that event was incredible and all the people who who attended like his ratings were all fives wow. the entire and it would have been like zero because he wouldn't have been able to so to we try to do as much as we can live but when we can't we don't tell people oh this is live we tell them you know this we give the person the opportunity to introduce, introduce themselves in their video and and why they're not here live and then we show the video that makes sense so then that way it gives continuity and context because to me everything is context I don't care if if you have like the best whatever in the world if it doesn't meet the need then it's irrelevant yeah so you have four projects going on um, nearly close together you're working with other clients you're doing events for yourself what are your timelines for um, each event? Or it just depends on how long the solution takes to uh, uh, get the message out? Right. So it's just going to depend on the client. So if we do everything from done for you, where we put your whole event together to where you already have your event and you just need us to host it and make it special, right? So um, we, so in 30 days or less, we could technically do an event, but I like to plan, excuse me, I like to plan, like I need to know, I like to make sure that we have covered as much ground as we can to make your event do what you want it to do. So if sales is your focus, we want to make sure that we have like the landing pages are right, the all the buttons work, um, you have a place where people can get questions answered, um, either live or, you know, just those kind of things. Or if your focus is engagement, then we can bring like, so for this event, everything for this event, so we're about to have a Mother's Day event. It's all about, enga- it's just people having fun. Like that's literally what it's all about. It's not about money. It's not about anything like that. It's literally about people having fun. So we got a DJ, we have a comedian, we have, you know, the musicians and, and um and we have a virtual swag bag because um and that was something that I cre- that I just came up with was like the virtual swag bag because I'm like I the shipping for stuff is kind of crazy right now. You can't get things where they're supposed to be in time. It is oh my god. I I almost whew, yeah, I get <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get worked up. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> I was like, oh my god, where so so what I was like, okay, so if we do a virtual swag bag, so you get a coupon, you can get anything where of like to free to like 50% off and different stuff like that for things that you actually want. So you look on, you can have everything in the swag bag, or you can just get the things that you think is great. Cause I've been to plenty of events and just got a bag full of stuff and threw most of the stuff away. Cause I can figure out what I'm supposed to do with it. So oh. I, yeah, I mean, I know it's crazy, but I mean, it does how it is. Everybody does it. So I'm like, okay, cool. So, and then, um, then that's, and then that way, now you have all these vendors who don't lose money just by giving stuff to people who don't want it. So all the people who actually contact you about getting whatever it is, then those are people who are actually interested in your product. Right. So that's yeah. kind of, yeah. <laughs> the virtual swag bag is the world. <laughs> I, I did get um, a swag box, um, but before everyone got started, uh, they had um, everything that was uh, printable, downloadable. So mm-hmm. I didn't get my box in time and I went and printed everything. And mm-hmm. right when I finished the last page, that's when my box came. <laughs> <laughs> well, we but- try to, I try to do that. I try to keep it 
Easy. And this time we aren't going to do any like, you know, like flags or anything this time. I, I thought about making a frame for all the people, for all the different organizations, but we'll do that another time. I'm trying to, this time, I just really want people to have fun. Like this, I, I would say that this is kind of more like, more like like a fair kind of feeling is what I want people to feel like they went to like you know what I mean something just so fun so blown out oh we have like um a, a wine tasting and a liquor tasting <laughs> all kinds of stuff like that so and and it's things that you can do if you're interested right so if you're not interested then you can just do something else so there's always going to be something going on at the event and it's going to be jam-packed because I only blocked off two hours per day. So on the 7th and then on the 8th, it's only two hours. So in two hours, you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with so much stuff uh, in uh, your event, um, how long is the event? Is it two days? It's two days, but it's only four hours. Okay. So two days, four hours. Do you have like walkthrough videos that you email to people to tell them uh, how to be prepared or how do you get them prepared? As exactly. We have a whole um, process that we send people through because especially because we're using air meat for this one, you don't want to show up to an air meat event in your pajamas <laughs> unless you want people to see you in your pajamas um you can always turn off your camera so people who are shy or people who don't really want to be um seen you know you can attend without sitting at a table so that is an option but to really be part of the event and to um really get to share and because this really is about healing. I know that sounds so crazy and it's so like cliche these days, but it's like, you know, when I, when, when that lady said that she didn't feel like she could come because her mom had passed, I mean, because her mom had passed and she didn't have children. I'm like, what, don't you have dogs? She was like, yeah. I was like, aren't you afraid? Aren't they your kids? Like, that's she like, you know what I mean? I was like, I, I know this sounds crazy, but it's to because my originally thought, my original thought about it was, well, that's just weird. But the truth is, is as a woman, you are a nurturer and you are going to find something that you are going to nurture and love like your children, whether you have children or not. Because I know plenty of people who have human children and they really <laughs> give their fur babies more love because <laughs> I have girlfriends who are like I hate that dog that dog <laughs> I love that dog more than me you know that kind of stuff so I I really feel like we have to allow ourselves to be what we were created to be and that is nurturers and be willing to receive and give love in that way yeah I believe that so um, your, your guests, your speakers, uh, you have uh, vendors uh, contributing to the uh, swag bags or virtual swag bags. How do you uh, approach them and get them to contribute? Well, because I know a lot of people. <laughs> it's good to know people. <laughs> That's just the truth. Um, I, what, what I did was I explained the idea behind what what it was and to me context is everything so if I, if you are out there trying to get your products out there and your brand out there I'm like we're gonna have I don't know how many people um gonna are gonna be at this event but because we do events all the time we can always ask you if you want to be in a swag bag for the next event Right. And so um, eventually right now we don't charge people to be because this is like a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't know I'm waiting for the analytics on from each vendor, like how it worked before. So um, I'm all about I like to have proof 
of a thing that is going to work, not just okay, that's what we're doing anyway. And um, <laughs> so, so I like to have that. So eventually we'll figure out how to monetize it. But right now we are just finding relevant items that people want to promote in, uh, in, in this, in this way. Okay. It'll probably turn into a whole nother business, but you know, that's just kind of how it happens for me. <laughs> it's a solution. People need it's solutions. An add on. It's an add on to what you're currently doing. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, yeah, it's, we, I, I have found so many little good things from doing these virtual events that it is phenomenal. And I'm like, wow, my friend's like, oh my God, I can't believe you thought of that. I'm like, it just came because we needed to figure this out. And so it's, it's great. It's, yeah. I, I love virtual. I don't, I don't think I would ever like, I, I, because I am, I'm an ambivert, right? So my natural tendency is to be introverted and to want to, like, I love the lab. I'll stay in the lab all day, every day, um, like the nutty professor. But um, <laughs> seriously, but I had to learn to be social. So therefore I have to like, it's, a, it's an effort, right? For me to do so. So virtual for me is way better because I can like step away, regroup myself. I don't have to get overwhelmed with all the people. And um because you, you have you ever been at a, a in-person event and you had to go to the bathroom yeah. and every time you're trying to walk toward the bathroom somebody want to like keep talking to you you're like <laughs> I really have to go to the bathroom and then you then they follow you to the bathroom <laughs> I hate that <laughs> I'm like I know and I'm like What's I'm personal gonna... space again yeah <laughs> But I'm like, um, but I feel like, you know, like I probably have done that too. Cause you're just so excited to talk to somebody and you're just like, well, I'll wait right here. Like, cause you're not thinking like, okay, this is a private moment and I totally get it, but I'm like, I really have to go. <laughs> I gotta go. And I don't know how to gracefully bow out of things. Um, I, I'm a nerd. I'm telling you, I'm like, look, I'm about to run across this room in a minute. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> it's good to say things as they are sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. So I am really excited and I'm so happy to be able to talk about this with you. Hooray. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to uh, with your uh, Mother's Day event? I'm really looking forward to the shout outs. I, I really yeah. am. Um, I, I think that I, I, to me, it's one of our speakers is Javion Woods. Uh, we haven't really told anybody who all the speakers are, but um, Javion was, Javion wanted to do that herself, but with everything that she has going on, she didn't have to. I was like, you know what? That'd be great. We should add this to the event. And she was like, would you do? I was like, of course we'll do it. I mean, you know, it'll be like so perfect. And um, I, I really feel like to me, that was like the icing on the event that we're going to literally get, not to just like be together in, in, in real, and just for all the fun and everything. But I really felt like it is you you know how you feel when you see people um, like during wartime and it's like a holiday and then they're overseas and they get to like give a shout out to their families or whatever. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's kind of how it made me feel when she talked about doing it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's going to be so wonderful. Cause you get to like just shout out whoever you want to. It doesn't have to be like your biological mom. It could be your godmom or whoever stepped in as your um, mom figure or whatever. So I thought that was I thought I thought it was like so perfect for this event. Will the shout outs be uh, live or pre-recorded? They're going to be pre-recorded, so people have to send them in, um, so that because again we want to make sure that 
the mom gets the spotlight and and not the tech issue. <laughs> I hope you send them to um the news outlets so they can be shown on TV just like um how you were talking at wartime and you see them. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll send it out as a press release and they'll be more than uh, welcome to use them because I think that, you know, it's the the event is so sweet. You know, at first when I was for one of when I had made a video when I was talking about it, I was actually trying to explain what the event was going to be like before I kind of like had had it everything together. So I just wanted to be able to create an environment of of love, right? And so I was like, well, we're going to have a love fest. I was like, no, I don't like that idea because that's not really what it is. But it's because I want it to be an opportunity, like a jumping off point for people to find that healing that has eluded us. My mom passed away in 1981 and I still have that. I don't really want to celebrate Mother's Day. And my and it's not fair to my kids or to my husband or whoever who really wants to do something nice for me. And I just still, I'm like, can I just stay in the bed? I don't really <laughs> want to. And a lot of moms are like that. They're just like, oh, and that's the cool thing about virtual. If you want to stay in the bed, you can stay and still have a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can still have a good time and stay at home. So I I don't I I really feel like get having an opportunity to honor your mom and yourself and the people who you love um in this way is it's healthy, you know. Um and we don't have to, and I don't, I, I would, my, my kids were like, well, do you want us to take you out to eat? I was like, in a, in a pandemic, it's <laughs> <laughs> opening up now. I was like, oh, okay. No, can we just, just come over and cook me some lamb or something? That's pretty much all I want. <laughs> so, or bring me some lamb. That'd be even better. But, <laughs> but I, I think that. And that's another reason why we did it as a pre-Mother's Day. Um, and there was a request to kind of make it be a third day. And I was like, no, I don't want to disrupt or the tradition of Mother's Day because people will still want to be with their family um, for Mother's Day or go put flowers out or whatever. So yeah, and then how I'm going to be feeling on Mother's Day itself. So I'm like, no. <laughs> I might be crying because you because know, my dad really was and now that, that was one of I posted this this morning like my dad when my mom when my mom passed my sister was four she doesn't remember my mom at all I remember my mom in a whole different environment like you know I remember like her um energy and her just wanting to help the community and all the things that she used to do and then um and how Christmas and Thanksgiving and every every holiday was like a major production at our house. And my sister doesn't remember that at all. And I'm just just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that she she was like, I don't remember any of that. And I'm like, well, this is an opportunity for us to find a way from that oh because there's 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 going to be like um uh, a lot of the um, so like we weave things into the event right so i don't know it's kind of like going all over the place but so there's like going to be like different organizations that help you to work you know have a conversation about this or you know one of the one of the one of the um one of the I don't they're not really a vendor they're just kind of like we, we talk about them a little bit and like it's NAMI so NAMI is um the National Association of Mental something but it's about mental health like I'm sorry NAMI I'm I, I'll get it right for the event. <laughs> but um but basically like when you have 
someone in your life who has a mental health crisis and you are you need somewhere to go to talk to because you don't know I mean because nobody ever like prepares you tells you anything about that unless it happens to you yeah right and so and if it doesn't happen to you happen to your children or something and you gotta have you don't you don't have no answer. There is not an answer out there. And so you all, you're thrown into the situation. So, so having to just somebody knowing that there's a place where you can get, start to find some answers and there's other parents who have gone through the same thing as you, and they can help you. And they've been through it a longer, so they can help you along the way and give you resources and tools and understanding is, is fabulous. Right. So there's a lot of people out there who are, who don't know that those kind of things exist. So we kind of like weave those types of tips throughout the event. So it could be like a screen um, scroll or a. Um, That's nice. Yeah. It's it a good idea. Awesome. Like you're having fun, but we're secretly helping you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You know how you do in business, you give them what they want, but then you also give help them understand what they need. (laughs) Because people don't really know that you, like you, if you are still, you're like for me, like my mom passed in 81. So if I was still like crying every day that my mom passed, I'm having, I have been having like some kind of trauma around that for way too long. So not that you shouldn't, still be sad that your mom passed but it shouldn't be like your every thought every day so there's people out there who can help you yeah it's a good thing you're doing a good thing thank i'm so excited okay i'm like i feel like i feel like um you know like like we're gonna have christmas or something i really feel excited that way (laughs) so um you got your guests through uh, crowdsourcing. You got your speakers just by being a linchpin and people gathering around you. You got vendors, same way, knowing people, having people around you. And um, now for your promotion, how are you uh, getting the word out about uh, the Mother's Day event? Okay, so all the speakers are going to invite their people to come. Um, so that's kind of how I decided to do this one because um, we, I should have had more, I know that'd be, okay, so like we're going to go look behind the curtain a little bit. Um, I should have planned this out a lot longer, but it didn't start out as an event like this. It really was just like something I was going to do like for a few people, we were going to just have a fun because I've done that like a bunch of times, like we've done like, um, like, like just small events for like a very targeted niches, right? So, and I really thought that's what it was going to be. I really did, but it kind of turned into some, some other creature on me. (laughs) So I was like, okay, so all the speakers are going to, going to, share normally we do like social media boosted posts all that kind of stuff um and we do press releases and you know kind of depending on what the goal is of the host right when whoever is in charge whoever's event it is um we don't do that many of our own events um we may, we, we've been, we've been talking about doing like one big event that we put together per quarter Mm -hmm. because, because of how we work and how, um, how everything is, we only can do 24 events a year. So we can do, you know, one in the beginning, one at the end of the month, you know, like a two weeks apart or whatever, however that is because it takes a lot to produce the events that we do. And there's a lot of checks and balances and a lot of um, things that we add to an event that takes time to build. Um, We do a lot of custom coding. Um, We do a a lot of, um, I wanna say customization is really what it would boil down to based on the need and the goals of the client. Yeah. I love a good design to represent an event. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, I, it's, it's just been, okay. So if, if, if I would have known that this event was going to be what it's kind of turning out to be, which is so, it's, it's kind of nerve wracking to me because I'm not like the person who's always like, hey, look at me, look at me. I'm not that. And then so now for this event, because I'm not even, I don't even think, even though I talked about doing that, um, that face washing thing, I, I might, and that's still a might just because I don't really want to be part of the actual event event. But um, it's just kind of a, um, becoming more and more necessary when we have when we host our own events that that one of us one of the people on our team has to be um, a speaker or something for it at least even to introduce the event and it's always seeming to be me and I'm like you guys this is not fair. <laughs> but they're like no 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 you do it you do it you do it so okay fine but it's it's um it's it's very exciting to be able to help a business especially during during this pandemic this has been one of the most I, I would say most external thing that major business shrink in that I've ever seen you know, we have, you have, even, even to the, to the degree that you can get the products that you need to be able to do the things that you do, it has been so devastating. And to be able to help people be able to give their audience the information in the interaction that they need to keep moving forward is been like, I don't know, just like finding diamonds or something, you know, like it's just been really great. Nice. Um, what will need to happen for this to become an annual event? Oh, Lord, girl, you just trying to make it. Oh, I don't know. I think that if we can, um, if we, if people are really interested, that would really be the thing that would like kick it off. So um, we have a lot of people, like I've gotten lots of emails and things of like, we like, I can't come because it's my, my kid's birthday or, and I'm like, just get, oh, and so that's another thing. Okay, okay, so, okay, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this part. We have an <laughs> app. So, Cause so you, you, you know, I used to make apps and stuff, but so, and now, I, so I got it. So, so we had an app that we make for all the events. So like you can be there in person, you know, um, on, at your computer, but say like, you got to go pick up your kid. You got to go do this. You got to do that. You can actually still be part of the event in the app. So you still can see all the speakers. You still can do all those things. So it's really going to be up to like I don't know how many people I don't know I guess the analytics that's the answer <laughs> I had to think about it. the analytics will tell us <laughs> because if people really I want it to be some if people really engage with it and connect with it and and want to do it again because it doesn't make sense to me I hate when when we just create stuff because we just create it and there's no purpose for it even though I think it's a great purpose for this event but and then next year we will probably have like way more, like way more swag, way more. Cause I had, cause I had like, okay. So I had people that I wanted to, to perform, but they're, they're not able to because they don't have enough bandwidth where they are. Can you believe that? Oh. <laughs> that's, that's literally what happened because like, you know, everybody's in remote places because they are, um, COVID, whatever. And then, yeah, but some people, some people, some countries, right, where you are, like, there's no way to get, you, we are still, we are blessed in America, because, like, we just, like, we don't want to listen to y'all, we're going to do what we want to do. <laughs> 
but in some places it's just not like that and they are still on crazy lockdown and then they keep messing with the 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 rules change all the time like oh we're gonna open up oh no we're not gonna open up oh we open up but we gotta shut back down you know that it's just like oh my god can y'all just get it together (laughs) stop killing us but a lot of people can't they don't have enough internet bandwidth to be able to get a video that's high enough quality that we can actually use it oh you know it'll mess up their brain and all that kind of stuff and I'm like I totally get it I understand yeah I'm like I get it I understand I'm like I don't know if I would do it either but so but they're like but if you do it again next year that's why I was like here you go talking about next year um (laughs) but if you do it next year I'll have it be ready for you I'll be ready for you and I'm like "Ah, okay okay so we um we have amazing people for this event and then we have like okay so we're gonna do like a whole event about um it, it's it, it's called like it's called the three P's of it's called the three P's because perfection is progress, right? And so it is all about how it can help it can help for an individual, but it's more targeted for business owners and um, that are really already successful, right? Like your business is fine, I guess fine COVID relevant, right? But you you need, but you're not happy even though you have all the stuff that you need, right? You know, like you you know you you got this award and that accolade, and you got you can buy you a Bentley if you want. You could go fly and play, blah blah blah. But you're still not happy, <laughs> right? Because you forgot to plan and you're happy. <laughs> so this event is gonna it's it's amazing. Um, it's, uh, Mia Potter from Finding Peace is going to be the, um, the host for that event, but it was her, the, the concept of it was amazing. I was like, okay, so can I get the notes? <laughs> I was just about to ask, is one of the perks of your job is that you get to attend, uh, free great event events for free? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually working, you know, and we always record the content so that the, um, so that the host can repurpose the content. That's like super important. But um, but yeah, so we um, <laughs> I get I've I've been to some amazing things. I uh, like well, I would say like the the National Beat Battle Association was one of the most fun things because I got to actually. Um, watch them get prepared and wa- and get to talk to the actual producers. So, so, so the Beat Battle Association is um, is is run by um, Chu Vance, and he um, gets all these like high end producers, like people who work with like like A list musicians right and so these people actually make the music and beats for them and they've all like won like grammys and and this like i'm like i'm like all fangirling right (laughs) and um they um so they battle each other okay so so like they're like so they have like like i think it's like five rounds and then there's a bonus round and so like they give them like you get the freestyle one, you got a finger drum one, you have to um, uh, redo a beat that they send you, and then you get, uh, um, I forgot, but anyway, but just to sit there and just like watch them, like one of them, they actually have to sit there and they got five minutes and they have to literally make a beat while you watch them. So you get to see like how their brains work in and how they're thinking. I'm like, man, I should have been, a, I should have been a producer. <laughs> Cause that thing looks so fun. And they just did their, um, they just did like their bowl, like the one, like where all the actual, um, like top guys from each of the, like they have teams all around the 
around the country and mm -hmm. then they all got together and then oh my god it's so awesome i can't i'm not gonna say who my favorite one is but I, every time that they're gonna play i'm like i'm watching it <laughs> <laughs> so, so j battle so, yes so i i think that i was able to it's like you get to experience things that you wouldn't normally get to experience because i would never go to one in, like that was actually in person because it's too many people unless they let me sit backstage and i'll be okay but like i said i'm an introvert i can't handle all those people um but yeah it's, it was it was amazing you uh, i know i shouldn't be like talking about them but you, you guys have to find that um they have a page national beat battle association or nbba i think anyway maybe we'll put it out if, if erica allows it but um because it it that was one of the most fun events i've ever produced it was it was beautiful and and it's it's actually a growing thing and there's lots of there's lots of beat battles but this one was just very um different and how they did it. And I thought it was pretty special. Do you have to get clearance for DJ to use uh, music or is it uh, like certain channels you can um, just play music? Cause I heard you could uh, just play music with Twitch but I'm not really sure. I think it's different for everyone. So you have to, because they're DJs they get a certain, um, mm, a, a kind of different path like you know like if you know like people used to sell like um uh what do you call bootleg but if you're a dj they can't they don't bother you for because it's not really bootleg it's what you do right yeah. so um it's a different um experience let's say or for a dj and they're actually creating the music so i'm sure for them to be able to use a specific thing they already have to have the license for it because that's what they do and whatever that license is they have so it's it's pretty great but we whenever we broadcast anything we always make sure that you know all the legal stuff is done ahead of time so everybody's all the people have signed their waivers and anything that is our responsibility legally we take care of but the rest of it would be in their uh, court i understand well we gotta uh wrap up now so could you uh tell tell everybody before we go uh what's uh your favorite uh piece of advice that you like to share with your clients when uh starting to uh host an event make sure that you know what the point of your event is like there's no you know you can just want to do something and that's all fine and good but the, um, anything that you do that you're going to spend this kind of money on you need to make sure that your that your roi because we really run the numbers we we go down to the to the wire and we look at you know based on if it's your internal thing where you're going to reach to your market we try to give you a guideline to go by but if it's like like this event where we're just like it's just like for the public anybody can come um people might not even come i mean you know we don't know but the fact is that you um you, you got to make sure that you run the numbers and that you understand the numbers so that because i that's just my my personal uh experience because you don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars on a virtual event and not sell if, if your goal is to sell what are you selling are the people you're inviting, you know, that's the solution that they're looking for. You know what I mean? Like you just yes. really, have to be, it has to be, it's a business transaction and you have to be able to understand what's all involved and how you're going to get your, what, that your ROI is going to not put you behind uh, business-wise. That's some good advice. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, where can people reach you? Oh my goodness. Um, right now, let's just have everybody, if you want to reach me right now, just go to, um, you can find virtual integrated productions or just go to VIP. I'm sure it's in the link. We'll put it in there. VIP experience on Facebook. Um, 
uh, the, or you can find me directly if you want to, I guess, <laughs> um, L. Kersey on Facebook, but because we are, we just, okay, so this is so crazy, and then this all kind of happened, right, like, in the past couple hours, we decided that we needed to kind of change our, 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 our website, because what we were, what we were doing before is not what we're doing right now, mm-hmm. so so we we have certain pages that are live for our website, which is um, virtualintegratedproductions.com. So that'll be live like in a few days again. But we took it down because we kept getting people wanting us to host um, Zoom type meetings, if that makes sense. Yes. And it's not that we don't do that, but it's it's the wrong, it was the wrong message because, and we needed to explain a little bit more because what we do is, is not Zoom based and, and it just became a, a situation. So, um, and, and because at first we were using Zoom and then all these new tools came out, which made what I was creating in Zoom with a lot of tech and um, effort. Mm-hmm. And and then and then then stuff breaks and you're like ah! so um anyway so yeah. more integrated so that's how we even came to the idea of everything being integrated into one kind of seamless experience for the attendees the sponsors and the hosts. Okay, sounds pretty so good. So next week you can find us on via on virtualintegratedproductions.com. But this week, just find me on, you can find us on Facebook and, um, yeah, Facebook. Oh, well, probably, we, we do have like Instagram, but I don't know. But you're much. mostly on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, because you know how you, when you're building all the things and everything just kind of changed for us. Like, so, like I said, we went from being in part of EK Media to now it's like totally a whole separate thing. So we're, I don't want to confuse anybody about like what's happening so next week like by monday everything will be smooth and everything but oh i know what you can do go to the vip ex- what is it called virtual integrated productions.com forward slash moms you could go if you go on my website on my facebook you'll find it and then you can go on there and check out the event and see all the stuff that's going to happen on there but i'm if you if you if you have a heart for for your mom or for yourself as a mom or somebody who you really want to honor, definitely this is going to be a good Mother's Day event. That's good. So the link that you gave me that I'm going to post under this video will the link take us there. Um, let me give it to you. The link that you for the Mother's Day event. I'll give you that right now. <laughs> if Zoom will listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I hate a, when that happens. It was so, I mean, I think Zoom is a great, there you go. I think Zoom is a great tool for what it was created for. And I think that we have expanded it to something that it wasn't designed to be as virtual producers. And there are some people out there who are doing some super amazing, awesome things with like this whole Zoomzilla idea. I think that's awesome. But for for less, for for a less tech complicated experience, um, we've really taken on some other platforms that really make it much better it meant a much better experience um, for everybody involved and it's it's pretty great I think it's good it's good well thank you Elle for coming on the show I hope your event goes very well I like that you're excited about it so I'm hoping your excitement will make other people excited about it too well, well thank you darling I appreciate it you guys 
do come. It's going to be great. Oh, okay, so let me tell you this. This was a thing. Okay, the t- there's a ticket cost, okay? I'm sorry. It's $30. <laughs> it is $30. I mean, it's not a big deal for a two-day event with all the stuff that's jam-packed in there. It's gonna, that's not really a big deal. And um, and if you have, like, if you are here and your mom is somewhere else, you can buy two tickets for $50 and then you get two accesses because two pe- two computers can't access the same um ticket i tried to figure out how they could work it didn't work <laughs> understand well that's a good thing too and there's nothing wrong with um asking for uh a monetary value for the time and effort you put into your own work and you're helping uh, people <laughs> yeah uh oh and like all the all the speakers like everybody who has like a charity like they'll get like some of some a percentage of the money goes back to those charities as well for them being part of our events. They didn't know that when they when they agreed to do it, but a lot of them have really good programs that I, I wanted to support. And I was like, you know what, this is the perfect time to do it. So there we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Al. You have a good uh, day. You too, darling. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Right. Bye. Bye.